Uh, okay, so uh, hello, hello everybody, and uh, maybe two cats on the YouTube stream. Um, originally, I was going to talk about uh, CSS colors, then I uh, decided to change my mind lah, because you don't want to talk, ma. Uh, I asked me to talk, then I won't sell any hardly change mine. So anyway, uh, this is going to be uh, CSS for I18N. Um, uh, why, why, why does this talk exist? I actually got to give this talk before. It's just that like, that's why this is like the more like less any hardly slides cost like, you know. But anyway, uh, I, I gave this talk once, then get recorded. So I'm like, eh, then record means there was no proof that I gave this talk before. So technically this is a new talk. Ha! But anyway, my vindictive personality uh, crafted this talk as a passive aggressive reply because I once heard someone say, oh, internationalization has nothing to do with CSS what? Wrong. Okay lah. No, actually not. I mean, it's not. Yeah lah, it's wrong lah. Got lah. Got relevance lah. Come on. Anyways, uh, so before we go into the details, uh, we must first explain to everybody why is internationalization I18N? Uh, you must understand there's this thing called numeronym. Uh, numeronym means what? Means uh, number based words, uh, I think. Yeah. Anyway, I've created this handy diagram that helps you count the number of letters in the word internationalization just to prove that it is 18 letters. Uh. So if you see L10N, that's like localization. Yeah. Oh my God, I must get rid of this irritating Uncle Roger's accent. But um, so internationalization is actually a bit broad. Lah, huh? But uh, if you look at the W3C definition, the, the guidance is you design and develop in a way that enables easy localization for specific audiences. So that's the broad one. And, and they, they call localization uh, the broad range of customizations that includes but are not limited to like, things like uh, numbers, uh, time and date, currency, symbols, uh, graphical reference, and so on. Uh. So internationalization is the design, but like localization is, is like the, the actual customization. This is a broad definition. Uh. I think there's no set in stone one also, uh, but I think you all get the gist. Um, but what this implies is that internationalization is really more than just translating the content and then just like, ah, okay, done. You're not done because there, there are nuances to the presentation of your content that will affect the experience of a native speaker using your site. Um, my favorite analogy to this is, um, I once played this video game called Sleeping Dogs. Uh, some of you may have heard of it, but it's like, I think Grand Theft Auto most people heard of. Like. So Sleeping Dogs is basically just GTA, but set in Hong Kong. Uh, so say in Hong Kong, Hong Kong, if you've never been there, you know that like um, predominantly Cantonese speaking. And then sometimes like when you watch some like, you know, like Hollywood movies, right, you're like, well, your, your movie budget is like $500 million and you couldn't hire one native speaker of Cantonese. Because ah. I mean, okay, uh, I may think of a language that I'm not, not familiar with at all, like um, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Ha. Uh, well, I don't know, Austrian or German or whatever. I mean, I don't know how it sounds like accurately. Like, so if someone says something in a pseudo German accent, I'm like, I guess it's okay. But like, if you hear your own native language, then you're like, oh my god, this person cannot cannot speak the language. I think it's a bit similar in that, like, if it's if, if it's right, nobody really notices. But if it's wrong, it's jarring. So so that's the that's the reason. That's the reason why. La. This is just like my pass this is my passive aggressive 2000 word response. Um but okay, okay. Uh, this is a this is a lame slide. Why CSS? CSS my cascading style shit law. So it's actually used for you, the, the developer, to talk to your browser, to like kind of like, hey browser, do this, hey browser, do that. But like when when brow when browsers started out, CSS is not very very powerful. So like a lot of things can do, right? But uh today, as V Shark has shown us, CSS is now like wow, quite quite really quite powerful, can do a lot of things now. Um 
my favorite quote about 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 CSS is uh, by by Lara Shank, uh, Shank, cannot pronounce. Sorry, um, she calls CSS a domain specific declarative programming language. It's kind of a nice, like very pleasant definition. Um, but like if you ever use a a website like Chrome, uh, which has <laughs> translation built in. If you go to like a, a website that's not your default language, right? Chrome will ask you, right, hey, do you want this page translated? Ah. And then, why you never ask, hey, how come Chrome knows to ask you this? Like, how come Chrome knows that, will we'll know to ask like, hey, maybe this person want the website translated? How come? Uh? How come? Uh? Or how come sometimes Chrome doesn't ask you when you land on a, a language that is clearly not your own. Ah, the 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 this is a website implementation issue. If the website never used the lang attribute properly, then Google also don't know how to ask. So important lang attribute. And it's actually really very important. I don't know why this is not emphasized more. Um but like the W3C has a whole because there's there's a dedicated they're dedicated working groups for internationalization, right? And, and they, they do have very well-written, comprehensive documentation, but I don't know, people just maybe don't know that they exist. So this is why they, they are trying to explain that. Why is this particular attribute so important? First of all, like language-specific behavior in browsers, like, like the example I just said, like um, Browsers would use this attribute for, for various things, not, on, not only the translation thing, which I know Chrome does, but like there are other underlying logic that the browser will, will depend on the lang attribute if it exists to, to, to do. Um, things like font selection. Uh, of course, there's also SEO. That's, that's not really browser. That's search engine specific. But that's, that's, that's very important. What, like My favorite... Uh, misuse of a quote is that if you have a website and Google cannot find does your website really exist? Yeah, think about that. Think about that. Philosophy. Uh, of course, then there's spelling and grammar, translation, and also for I couldn't okay, I know one of my friends tweeted a link that they actually recorded, but if you use a screen reader and and the lang attribute is wrong, right? Oh my god, the accent is like oh it's actually to a point where it's funny. Ununderstandable but like funny. Um so that, that actually plays a factor to folks who actually don't use like the web like most of us do as a visual medium. They rely on like screen readers and text readers, right? That's quite important also. Um, so the basics of how you use the lang attribute is that you put it on the HTML document. That's for the overall language of your document. And then if you have, uh, you, and this is very common, you would almost always have like mixed language content. Then you would like um, surround that particular piece of text or content, you wrap it uh, and then give that the appropriate lang attribute value. And so in the, on the CSS side of things, um, not sure how many people know that this pseudo class even exists, but there's this thing called the lang pseudo class. And, and this selector is actually uh, quite cool, quite cool. Uh, okay, and here we have this example, it's a mixed language sentence. Uh, so the markup is like, like this, you can see, there's a M, it's like Chinese, right? So the Chinese part, the second half of the sentence is, is a markup with a span tag to, for, for me to tell the browser that uh, this, this, this bit is, is Chinese. So um, Chinese writing in and of itself does not have italic styles. So when you see this, right, this italic style, right, this is like, eh, it's like, no, that's not, that's not how, 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 that's not how we emphasize text, lah. Let's, let's put it that way. Um, to, to emphasize text in Chinese and, and, and in Japanese as well, right? Uh, there's this type of punctuation. In Chinese, it's called zozong hao. Um, I would guess you translate it into uh, text emphasis because that's like what the, the CSS uh, property is called. 
So, okay, let's fix this first. Put it back to normal. Like, uh, none of this italic nonsense. And then you can use this text emphasis dot. So, so just a, a dot on uh, below. I think Japanese does it above, uh, if I'm not wrong. So, Chinese does it below. Uh, use text emphasis dot and, and you can do that. But what I want to highlight here is that the selector I'm using is the length pseudo class. So, I didn't have to... Um, explicitly put the Chinese language on the M. See, it's just a it's just a regular M, but the browser can recognize that it has it wants to select that bit. Um, because of the length attribute, it recognizes that this line, this this chunk of text is is Chinese, in that sense, and. And what I want to talk about text emphasis is that it's not really just for uh, uh, Chinese and or Japanese. Text emphasis uh, can be quite fun. You can do funny things like uh, triangle. I don't know if this is like punctuation in any language, but why not? I think there's a, I don't know, double circle? Is double circle a thing? Never research. Ah, right? I got double circle. I think you can use string. Uh, yeah, uh, you only take the first letter, lah. But you know, I'm sure they're like creative users for this. So that's kind of fun. Um, so other ways to select like language specific, uh, we can fall back to um, the more commonly seen attribute selectors. And attribute selectors quite versatile because you, you can uh, so, sort of tailor how you want it to match based on um, like whatever additional symbols you want to give it. So if you just do lang zh, then okay, I only match anything with the attribute of lang zh. Um, but if you use this carrot, I think it's called carrot, maybe it's not called carrot, like this pointy thing, whatever. It will match uh, anything that starts with zh. So you can zh, zh dash, hk dash, han, like zhong, zh123, oh, also can, also can, because it's pattern matching. Ma. Uh, then if you use the pipe character, it will match zh with a dash. Uh, yeah, so anything zh dash will, will go, uh, as well as zh itself. Um, so some things to note if you want to use the length pseudo class is that the, the three attribute selectors I covered just now, right? Actually, you just use the length pseudo class, right? Settle already. Actually, you, the, if you're doing language specific, right? I really lean towards recommending using uh, this length pseudo class for, for everything. Um, in terms of, because the logic, the logic behind how the browser passes uh, the, the selector is different if you use the pseudo class versus the attribute. So if you use the attribute, right, it's a, it's a comparison against the attribute on the element. But when you use the length pseudo class, right, the, the user agent actually relies on the document semant semantics for the comparison. So it's kind of a different bit of logic. Uh, and I mean, if you really want to, you can just create a normal CSS class or even ID for some, I'm sure there's some use case for it. Like, I, I can't think of one now. Like you can create a class called uh, ZH if you, if you wanted to, but then, then you have to go and like one by one, go and label your, 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 your elements with those classes. It's kind of, you, 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 you are, you're not making use of the convenience. So if it's me, right, I would go the pseudo class route. Lah. Uh, yeah, said that. So now that we know how to select uh, the, the language that we want to style, right? There are, there, are, there are quite a number of CSS properties. Like all of the like 500 plus CSS properties, there's a good chunk that helps us sort of like fine tune the presentation of content. So a lot of these are typographic related, of course. Um, so I think the next few is mostly typography related uh, CSS properties. Um, so one of the things that, that CSS allows us to adjust these days is uh, the, this four fonts problem. Because uh, browser is actually very helpful. Like if you use web fonts, right, then sometimes um, the, the font 
you only uploaded one weight or you not enough money to pay for the other weights. Oh, so sad. Oh my God. No operating budget. Anyway, uh, if the if the phone d- doesn't have the relevant phone file for a, a different weight, a, a heavier weight, la, or even a different style like an italic, right? Browser will try to synthesize. They're like, I will, I think this is what they want. Uh, let me try and just like sort of quick tweak this uh, regular font file to give the the author the effect that he wants. Um, the designers and the font font designers specifically were like, if they if they are dead, they will turn in their graves because like oh my god, you ruined the font. Um, I know like maybe some people can, won't notice the difference, but you know it's about the craft. You know very important. Um, so you can use font synthesis uh, to just tell the browser, it's like, okay, uh, I, I know you want to be helpful, but don't need. So you just say font synthesis, none, and, and your, your browser will leave your font alone. Yeah. Uh, then there are also glyph differences. Uh, so I try to blow this up as much as possible. Um, actually, I'm not sure if the Arabic script and the ligatures have this uh, behavior as well, because I'm not familiar. I'm familiar with Han characters. Um, so if, if the script you are using has Han characters, maybe Japanese or like Chinese, right? So there is the same, how, do we, how should we explain this? It's the same character, but a different glyph. So the one on the right is uh, the simplified glyph. The one on the left is supposed to be the traditional Chinese glyph. And this is one of the things about, about Chinese writing, right? They, they, are, they are simplified and traditional Chinese glyphs that the, the character itself, right, looks completely different one. Like one is really like simplified, like really had less strokes. And then there are some where the, the character is still the same. But when you design the font, right, it's different. So if you look, the language is... Uh, Han S for simplified, and then the one on the right is Han T, right? Uh, there are these tiny, tiny little differences. If you look in inside, like if you can speak Chinese, right, the Yue part of the of the character, the design is different, and and the the browser can pick up on this and and present the correct glyph if you if you tell it to if you tell it correctly. Uh, so okay, this. I know I said like most CSS properties are a bit general, these are very specific, these are just for, it says so, it says so in the property, it says East Asian, so you know it's just for East Asian. Um, so this is, uh, I won't dive into the Unicode part of this, because that's actually very interesting, but very, very, very long-winded. Uh, I can just say that this particular property, right, lets you toggle, toggle what glyph to use. Um, if you have to like adjust your text in a hurry, um, why do I say this? Because the they are Unicode code points that will only that, that represent only that traditional Chinese glyph, for example. But the versions that I'm using here are the type that um, can where this particular property can apply one. So so okay, the default is is simplified. If I spell traditional correctly, I think you can see that the glyphs change. I just like doing this, sorry. Um, so earlier when I said like for Chinese, there are specific glyphs that the, the character just looks different, even though it's the same character. Like we use it the same, it's read the same, it's just written differently, right? Just look at this one I highlight, right? It's just one of those. So the like the number of strokes is like significantly different. But anyway, uh, this property Let's you talk about that. And then, so if you're using Japanese, right? Japanese, um, I think the way they split their, their, their what should we call this, character set up into groups is based on their, their JIS standard, Japanese industrial standard. Basically, it's like a national standard. Like, uh, uh, I think mainland China, they call it Guo Biao. Um, so it's like a standard like, set of, of, of characters glyphs that go into that set one. So for Japanese, you can actually toggle 
Um, okay, my text is not Japanese, so it doesn't really, but it's like JIS something. There's a, there's a number behind it. I think there are six sets. So this, this lets you toggle that also. Um, there's also log font language override. Um, this is specific to the, the, the style, the, the typographic conventions. Uh, I didn't have a good example myself, so I just stole this from the spec. So apparently, like, uh, Macedonian is not a very common font that people design from, uh, for. But, like, they have, like, similar characters to Serbian. So if you need the type of, like, how should we put this? Like the typographic conventions that apply to this particular script, right? This Macedonian script. Um, you can use font language override and set it to the language that does have it. But the browser itself can still recognize that, oh, it's, this is just stylistic. The language itself, this text itself is still in Macedonian, even though it's presented using the, the Serbian typographic conventions. So these, these, these font properties are, are really trying to, to give uh, authors more tools so that they can create much better international experiences. Like as long as you're not using English, right? There are definitely things that you need to take care of. And, and now these, these are relatively new, right? It's in fonts level four. So they're trying to push more and more of these uh, properties that, that let you tailor to your mother tongue like where necessary. I think this is a good thing. Ah, text transform actually, uh, a lot of us use text transform, um, but uh, this is just more like fun fun fact. Usually we use a uh, text transform for uh, adjusting case or, or like capitalization. Um, but there are, there are language specific uh, case mapping rules. So like if you look right, uh, this, is, uh, this is German. So the German asset, right, when you change to uppercase, the, the asset become a double S. And then Greek also, Greek also got this kind of thing. If you look at the, the Greek vowels, they basically the glyph, I think they're supposed to either, I don't know, lose their accent or something. But yeah, the, the glyphs completely change. And this is, um, these are language uh, specific tweaks that, that CSS will impact. Uh, it, okay, even uh, go back to Japanese, right? Japanese has this uh, Ruby annotations. You see, we see this more in Japanese than Chinese these days, but Chinese also use Ruby. It's like for, for annotations, like Hanyu Ping annotations on top of the glitch, right? So if you do things like, Full size comma, and then you also change, like you can use text transform for these things. I just like doing this like tricky thing in life. Okay, moving on, moving on. Oh my god, I swear I'm more older than five years old. Um, okay, this may be may sound irrelevant, but got got point one, got point one. You all just tahan me for a bit. Uh, here there's a line of text. Uh. Pop quiz question, don't have to answer to me, answer in your own head. How many line boxes are there? The correct answer is five. Why five? Because you know the markup, right? If an element is one line box, the M, one another line box, that's two. Was it the third line box? Really there? Fourth line box? At all question mark, fifth line box. Five line boxes, okay? So now is uh, gonna space everybody happily existing on the same line. But if we blow it up, right? Then now no space. How? How now? Uh, your line box will break. Oh. Ah. So this break here, right, is, 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 a, is known as a line break. And, and these lines are broken uh, based on how the content behaves. So this is a, this is a soft, soft wrap break. Lah. So when wrapping is enabled, the user agent uh, has to minimize the amount of content overflowing a line by, by wrapping the line at a soft wrap opportunity. So soft wrap opportunities depend on language. Uh, English, okay, got space means you can break. If you use, for Chinese, right, every character also can break, but not all the time because uh, there, there are punctuation rules 
that like certain things cannot start or end a line also got. So that there's a bit of ambiguity there. Uh, Thai, if you happen to pick, speak Thai, Thai time breaks are even more arbitrary. Not say arbitrary, like, but if you don't read Thai, then it feels arbitrary. So all these, right, uh, are really very unique to each language. And the browser is actually smart enough to, to detect this, which I think is quite amazing. So there is CSS for controlling line breaks, all of this. Um, I suggest if you are interested, because I would think most of you probably don't, but if you happen to be interested, uh, .css talk by uh, Florian Vivoal, uh, and .css, it's an 18 minute talk, so also not very long. Goes into detail about all these um, uh, different different line break specific CSS. Hyphenation is one of those things. Uh, I don't know, people don't really talk about it a lot, but this is uh, one of the things that a lot of thought had to be put into it. And hyphenation behaves very differently also depending on the script. So actually this entire topic to me is very intriguing, uh, but like if, if you're not interested, also never mind, like, you do you, right? Just, just putting it out there, there are resources. But if you do not give a language attribute, you don't get automatic hyphenation because the browser needs to know what language it is before it knows how to hyphenate. Yeah, because yeah, language specific dictionary. So that's that's one thing to take note of. Again, highly recommend that talk. Uh, okay, the this is uh we move on now. Uh, move on from word level to layout level. So my uh, one of my favorite uh, CSS property uh, is, uh, writing mode. Writing mode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, default writing mode for the web is horizontal top to bottom. Uh, very logical explanation. Web was born at CERN. Official language at CERN is what? Uh, English and French. English and French, how to write? Horizontal top to bottom law. Uh, so, okay, this is an ex explainable phenomenon. Uh, this uh, on the left, this is Mongolian, the traditional Mongolian script, not the, not the Cyrillic one. So, this traditional Mongolian script, right, is read left to right vertically. And then um, Japanese, uh, Chinese traditional, then you can write it vertically, but it run right to left. Lo. So you can do this uh, fairly straightforwardly using the writing mode property. Yeah, before this, uh, I, have, I have I have no idea how you do this. I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know. Do you space? Do you just like space, 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 space? I don't know. I cannot imagine. Um, but now it's nice. Now it's, now it's like, like legit. Um, so this is in conjunction. When you use writing mode, you have this sort of like a, a complementary uh, uh, properties is to uh, adjust the glyphs. So when you write a uh, uh, char Chinese character, vertically. Uh, the browser knows that, oh, this is a language, right? That can be written both ways. So I will, the browser knows that, okay, I will keep the glyph upright. So the default for Chinese characters when you do vertical, right, it'll be upright one. But for, for languages that are, you know, horizontal by nature, the browser will just rotate them because it, it really doesn't make sense to, to keep that upright. But in the event you do want it upright, for example, abbreviations, right? Uh, then you just say, oh yeah, yeah, this bit, this bit, uh, hi browser, just, just like, you know, make my letter stand up, please. So you use text orientation, uh, then you can make it stand up. Text combined upright is also useful. It's a useful uh, typographic behavior because I say like, you know, MBA is kind of, it's kind of short, right? Oh yeah, nah, nah. I can kind of squeeze it, nah. squeeze, squeeze into this like square character space. Ah, then you use text combine upright. The full spec would, should let should limit this to two to four. Uh, but for now browsers just like I think they got other priorities. They say I just do all. So if you wanted to put all uh, basketball, a uh, browser would just squeeze like basketball into that space. Then. It just looks very squeezy. Lah. So uh, this one, you use your own discretion. But yeah, if, if you are dealing with vertical text, you can use these things to tweak. Quite useful, quite useful. Right to left languages. CSS should not be used here. Uh, this one, this is a, a Unicode guidance and, and, and uh, 
again, uh, Unicode in and of itself, very fascinating topic. One of these days, right, we should get someone to expert to come and talk about it. Um, but the, the rationale behind it is, is because, first of all, there is a Unicode bidirectional algorithm. And um, so the browsers already implemented that. And, and the directionality, like this is a lot of facts, but the long story short is that CSS is fleeting. So there is a chance that CSS doesn't load or fails. The, the presentation of the content should not be reliant on something that is like, there is a potential that is unreliable. So you should not use um, CSS for bi-directional styling. They, they, I, I think my slides I got shared, there's this thing called the Unicode standard NX number nine. That it goes into a lot of detail. Um, so the recommended solution is you use the DIR, direction attribute, set it, set it on your markup to define the base direction of your text. That's the, that's the, that's the safest. Because if your HTML don't load, then you see nothing also. So there's no chance that it's displayed wrong, right? Uh, then, yeah, okay, so vertical writing, this is my spiel to people who don't like, oh yeah, vertical writing not, not applicable to me. Um, but I mean, if you, you know, do this like more graphically, like, you know, posters, poster stuff like we should talk about just now. Vertical text in graphic design is like very common, lah, come on. So, yeah, yeah, you can do this in, in, in web design. This, this particular example is Russian, it's Russian in like 1920s. So people have been doing this for years. So it's not like this like newfangled, new agey thing, okay. Huh. Oh, well. Yeah, anyway, this is done in CSS. I mean, it's not great, but I think it's not that bad. Lah. Um, so, physical directions for, for writing modes other than horizontal can be a bit confusing, which like, let's say, okay, horizontal, right? You use top, uh, bottom, left, right. That's great, right? Like, if I want to give a bit of padding, I say what? Well, I say padding left. But then, oh, if I like change the writing mode to something, you know, like, hey, I want to, I want to give it some space. Uh, pet what, ah? Like, here sticking too close. Pet what, ah? Actually, I haven't given this talk in so long, ah, that I literally really don't know what I was supposed to do. So, uh, let's see, padding. Padding uh, top do what, ah? Okay, padding top shift it down. Then, okay, no, no, no. Actually, I want to I want to shift it away from the left. Wait, ah, uh, padding. It's not padding bottom. Padding left, ah. Uh. Uh, yeah, but the fact that I do think about this, right? It's like it's very leche. So, physical directions of top, bottom, right, left can be a bit, uh, confusing. I would say this is why we got like logical properties. I uh, wanted that refresh. They are problem. There we go. Um, so there's mapping. Uh, instead of uh, top, right, bottom, left, the indicative direction is based on block and inline. So block basically just means the direction that your blocks of text flow, while inline is the direction where the, your letters go. Um, actually, this is easier with a diagram, which I don't think I included. Um, but logical properties is something that is, is I feel, very useful. Uh, do I have a good example? Oh, yes, I included a code pen. Amazing. Um, yeah, so if, like, you had, you use physical directions, right, then you're styling things. If you're using top, left, bottom, right, right, every time you change the direction, or your code must change, eh? Like, top, border, top, color. Like, if I wanted to keep my my uh, orientation of my border colors with respect to my text, right? This is, this is all the crap that I have to do. Oh my God. But if you use logical directions, one code, Gao Tim, no matter how you up, down, left, right, oh, um, the code sorts itself out for you. So, so that's, that's a, I feel that's a big, that's a big plus point for logical directions. Um, yeah, okay. More, more, I ATN and fun stuff. Um, 
is uh, lists and counters because numbers are not only the traditional one, two, three, four Arabic numbers that we are used to. Uh, so if you want to be like, have more variety in your OLs, uh, got a lot of choices, got a lot of choices. Uh, off the top of my head, I cannot remember, so I'm just going to be boring. Lower Roman. Ooh, so exciting. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, okay, I must, I must, I do my favorite, my favorite. Ha! Heavenly stem. This makes sense if you speak Chinese. Don't speak Chinese, you're like, what's this ridiculous? Uh, I don't know. Tian, Tian, Tian Zhu, Tian Gan. Ah, yeah, God knows what lah. But like, yeah, I got heavenly, and I think there's an earthly counterpart, I just cannot remember. But it's very fun, like, yeah. Uh, what's even more fun is that I think we're still dis in discussion, CSS, not CSS, like the, the, the working groups, is like, should we cycle this or not? Because um, formally it's like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, no more already. So for now, browser implementation is just repeat, and then, I think the discussion we had was like, should we just repeat, like, start again from the first, or do we like append and do this? This is like still in discussion. So, um, yeah, things like this, people, we have to consider when we are doing uh, internationalization. Uh, why did I include this? <laughs> this has nothing to do with, <laughs> yeah, nothing to do with I18N, but I, I just thought that it was interesting that uh, you can do this bus with CSS. I don't know nowadays whether people, no, so nowadays people usually ask you to, for your job interview, they ask you to build a Twitter clone with React, right? So this is probably a bit of an updated interview question. But if someone asks you to do this bus, right? You're like, huh, I can do this with CSS. Yeah, can I? Because got counters, uh, counter property, quite fun. Yeah, amazing. I think that's about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, got some useful links. Uh, the the bi-directional algorithm are really quite interesting. Um, so if you got time, uh, I can go and go and read. Uh, yes. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Uh,